get into it. We talk about, you know, what they owe on the property, how long they've had the property. We start to get the details on the property and we start to get into the numbers. Once we get into numbers, generally when you've when you're calling them, when you're in a conversation, you already, unless they're calling you from some kind of marketing you put out there and then they're calling in, generally, if you're calling them, you know that they're at, you know, 1527 Johnson Avenue. You already know that they're there. So you will have looked at the comparables. You would have gone online, whatever service or software you might be, maybe you're on Zillow, whatever. And you would have gone there and said, okay, this is 1600 square feet. You know, it's a three bedroom, two bathroom whatever tax information you could have pulled up, whatever MLS information you could have pulled up, you would have done at that point. You would have done that. You'd have gotten that information. And now when they're talking to you, you're just looking for inconsistencies because that happens sometimes. You know, it's often, I mean, we had one the other day that we were looking last week, I think it was. It said it was a two bedroom, two bathroom, but in talking to the owner, it was really just a two bedroom, one bathroom. Why? Because they had a basement and in that basement, they had this makeshift bathroom put in there at some time. They didn't really even count it because there were no walls. No, it wasn't really a comfortable place that <laughs> for you to <laughs> for you to go and relieve yourself. I mean, there's no, you're in the basement and there's just a toilet and, and a sink in the corner. I mean, it was not a bathroom. No one would count that as a bathroom. So they didn't use it, of course, so they didn't count it as a bathroom. So when I was speaking with them, I was able to get to the bottom of that. Now, could we have made it a bathroom? Mm, possibly, but was it worth doing all that extra work to the basement? In that case, no. So we had to value this property as a two-bedroom, one-bathroom, not a two-bedroom, two-bathroom, and then make the numbers work from there. So once you're having this conversation, you're in it now, you're in the thick of it. Okay, what do I need to say? How do I get to it, right? How do I present my offer? Well, you're gonna give them your cash offer. And very often I'll do something like this. When I'm having a conversation with someone and I can see, you know, maybe they don't have much equity at all. Maybe they've had it and they refine it. I mean, there could be all kind of stuff, but I can see that they don't have a lot of equity based on the software that I use. And so I let them know, hey, I've got your house valued at about this, you know, in the best conditions in the market that we're in. In all honesty, everything is different. Everything is different today. You know, as I told you last week, this is a side note, guys. I told you they were going to raise the rates, didn't I? I said it's going to be between a quarter, a quarter point, 25 basis points and 50 basis points between a quarter and a half a point. And they went up a half a point. And they are assuming they're going to have to raise it again throughout 24. But what they said for sure is that rates will not go down. Excuse me, 23. Rates will not go down in 2023. So what does that mean for you as the investor? You have to adjust your offers. You have to adjust your offers. If you were doing, you remember what we talked about last week with your equation, your wholesale equation, the ARV times 70%. Minus renovation, minus your potential profit, equals your maximum allowable offer. All right. The one variable that's going to change in there is the ARV. You can't go and look back a year anymore. Right? Because even if your appraiser came out and said, hey, a year ago, because they'll say you can go back, you know, go up to a year. A year ago, things were selling at 350000 That was a year ago. Right now, depending on where you are in the market in, or in the country, that 350 is maybe 280, maybe 300, maybe 320. But one thing's for sure, it's less. It's less. The value is less. And every lender, regardless of the appraisal that comes in, they're going to look at it and they're going to say these in underwriting, these comps were done 12 months ago, 10 months ago. The market is drastically different today than it was then. And they are going to make you, the buyer, the investor understand that by cutting the value on that appraisal. It happens all the time. Expect to see that. So you have to adjust your numbers when you're making your cash offers. It's going to be tough, but it's real. So here we go again. I'm sitting there. I'm having a conversation with a seller and I'm, I know what they want. I know that there's not much equity. I know that I have to reduce the value of this house. Every person is different. Every situation is different right? Let's just say this is a house that someone's had for a while. You know, they do want to get out of it, but it needs a lot of work. 
You know, it's not something that you can just throw, you know, $7,000, $10,000 into, you know, changing out the flooring, painting it, things like that. So you, you need to be aware that you have to make a cash offer based on this price today. And let's say that the after repair value when this thing is all said and done, let's just, we're going to keep the numbers simple. Let's just say it was $300,000 in today's market. Okay. This person could say, look, you know, these people over here sold the house six months ago for 330. Yeah, they did six months ago. But the interest rate has gone up in six months, one and a quarter percent on the Fed side. That means interest rates went from about 4%, you know, maybe maybe 5% to you and me, now to over seven, sometimes eight. So I can't pay you that. You know, I'm just not. And there's more houses on the market today. It's going to sit there, blah, blah, blah. These are real things. These are real concerns that people have. And you got to know that that's what's going on. So you have to adjust your after repair values when you're making your cash offers, period. I'm giving you everything you need to find success as a real estate investor. So make sure that you subscribe to this channel and like this video. See you later.